Can you believe it's been 10 years? I can't. Um, some people, we were at Police Week last week talking about it, and you know, you have those that it seemed like yesterday, and then you have those that it seems like it was forever. Uh, and obviously, it depends on where you are, meaning were you close, intimate family, or were you coworkers and friends? And, um, but yeah, it, uh, 10 years ago, it, it does not seem that long, believe me, believe me to me anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. In some ways, it does seem like some of those those emotions, those some of the things you saw. Mm. I, I mean, can you take us back to the scene, kind of arriving there? And uh, yeah, um, you know, the you hear the term the politicians use it. What will you do when you get that 3 a.m. phone call? Well, I got that 3 a.m. phone call, and um, you know, I remember when the phone rang at that time. I thought, man, this can't be good, but. And then when I looked over to the phone, it said Nelson County Dispatch. Then I knew it was not good. Because if it was an incident or a situation, you know, the night chief on my department would be the one calling, not dispatch. So uh, I, I knew. And then I just remember him saying, we've got a bad situation, chief. Of course, by that time, I'm already up trying to throw on clothes, uniform, whatever I wore, and talk at the same time. And uh, he just said, we, we're not sure what happened. He's down. I said, okay, who? And of course he said it was Ellis. Um, it, and because of those tree branches, it was very confusing to everybody, you know, because I think he even told me, we don't know if he, a tree fell on him, which I thought, what in the hell was he doing on a, you know, you know, but there's three o'clock in the morning, the cobwebs and, um, but I just remember him saying it's, it's not good. He would never, he did not tell me he had been killed, uh, and that's not his place. I don't blame dispatch at all, but doing this long enough and those spidey senses, as we call it, I, I knew it was not good. And then, uh, you know, I lived right in town, in Bardstown, and you know, I jumped in my car, I'm, I'm headed out to the bluegrass, and uh, my phone rang, and it was one of the officers who was on the scene. Uh, happened to be one of, you know, Jason's good friends, and he's crying when I answered, and. He's like, they, 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 they killed him. He's, he's, he's gone, Chief. He's gone. And I said, I'm, I'm on the way. Uh, not knowing what I was going to do, but I, I was, you know. And then when I got to the scene, I, I remember it was uh, eerily silent. And it was a full moon that night. So for 3 o'clock in the morning, it was, it was just lit up. Um, natural, but of course the lights, the police lights and stuff. But I just remember it being eerily silent. and walked up to the yellow tape and you know the officers were just standing quiet there were like four paramedics on the scene and they were just kind of standing I don't want to say in formation but they were just standing you know shoulder to shoulder just kind of like a you know wow and uh, I just remember lifting the tape KSP and the sheriff were arriving at the time because you know it happened out in the sheriff's jurisdiction so uh, he responded and I just remember lifting the tape and walking up and looking down at Jason and thinking, what, what in the hell happened here? You know, didn't call off. Obviously this tree didn't fall on him, um, but he was obviously shot and killed. Uh, and I just remember kneeling down and his, uh, his right knee was up, he was on his back. And I just remember putting my hand on his knee and I, you know, I had, I had my moment, I guess, where I, I was confused, I was upset, I was hurt, I was mad. Just you know, cried a little bit, and I just remember, Jason, we'll we'll figure this out. And I stood up, and uh, you don't. I got. I kind of told myself, okay, you got to be the chief. Cry later. And at that point, I just said, okay, guys, here's you know. I just started shooting directions, and of course, KSP was going to take it. The you know, sheriff and I and KSP kind of grouped, and, and the sheriff said, I want KSP to take it. Absolutely, I knew they had they had better toys than both of our agencies combined so uh, but that was that was that moment where you know I thought, wow you remember such vivid details I mean is it is it just stuck there there were things that um, there's an old saying in police work is, is I wish my heart could forget what my eyes have seen and there's just some things throughout my God, what on 35 years that I was on it there are some things that I could describe to a detail. Some things like you'd have to remind me, oh yeah, I did make that run, but there are certain things that, you know, 
where were you when Kennedy was killed kind of things, you know, uh, and that's one of them. That is etched in my head and uh, it's never, it's never going to leave, even if it's solved, it's, you know. And I remember when we talked, you know, five years ago for the podcast, you called it your darkest day. Is it still your darkest day? Will it always be your darkest day? I think so. You know, and, and when I say that, meaning um, I've been in shootings. Uh, I've been, been in some horrible situations over the three decades I was in. Um, and while, you know, there's always that, I don't want to say PTSD, but close. Um, this hurts worse than some of the things that I personally went through because, you know, uh, captain of the ship, my, on my watch, uh, and such a young officer, damn good officer, young officer, married, two little boys, it's just like, man, can it get any worse, you know? Um, and again, doing this as long as I have, or as long as I did, you know, you, you, you learn to take your personal stuff and put it over on the shelf for a minute. You've got things to deal with, and, and uh, it'll, it'll always, always be in my mind. Ten years with no-name suspects, ten years with no arrests, no answers. Did you ever imagine it would take ten years? I was thinking again the other day, again, we were at Police Week, as I mentioned, so, you know, that's all we talk about for a week, sadly. Um, that morning that, uh, once I finally got the okay from Amy and Jason's family, because obviously the you know, the media was calling, hey, what can you tell us? We're on the way. Um, so I, we did a press conference. It's going to be a very, uh, very emotional day. Of course, very stressful day. I, I just remember when I was giving that press conference thinking, I don't have a suspect for you, but surely by the end of the day, and then the funeral rolled around and no name and, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, kind of go back to what you said, no. Just stand there and give that press conference. I, in no way could I have imagined that 10 years we're going to still be talking about it. Not that we shouldn't, but we're talking about an unsolved murder, not just, hey, this officer was killed in the line of duty 10 years ago. You know, we've got that extra appendage of it's still unsolved. And, you know, the uh, Jason's family and his boys need that closure I think you know they're owed that um, then the department our needs come second obviously uh, but there everybody needs closure in this and, you know again it's like man I, I, I thought after 10 years there's no way it would still be unsolved and I, I know when I was getting ready to retire or leading up to my retirement I always said I hope whenever I do retire that it's solved by the time I retire now I'm thinking I'm retired now what do I do I hope it's I hope I live long enough to see it solved. I mean, you know, where do you go from here? So. Why do you think this is such a challenging case to solve? I, I don't know, and, and, and I'm, you know, I, I still talk with KSP occasionally. They don't tell me a lot, don't want them to. Uh, but it, I, I think everything is kind of in place, but it's, it's, perhaps it's like with the Crystal Rogers or the Tommy Ballard. It, they just need one more piece to, you know, the old, I, I, I can only charge you with what I can prove, not what I think, and I, I just don't think that final piece is there yet. And, you know, if in, you would, you'll remember, in the beginning, I kind of was like, yeah, it had to be two or three people. You know, this was just two, and then as time goes on, I'll, I'll be the first to say, maybe we were all wrong. Maybe it was just one person, one poor soul who snapped a PTSD you know, that snapped, and we'll never know if it was truly just that one person. Um, so. The FBI has insinuated that they think, you know, if they can find answers in Tommy's case, Crystal's case, or Jason's case, they can find answers in all of them. Right. What do you think? Do you think that there's a connection here? None that I see, but again, I'm on the outside, now I'm really on the outside. But all the years I was there, we could never make a nexus of, of tying them all in. Um, again, doesn't mean tomorrow they're going to get a tip 10 years later, that, that aha moment. Um, but I don't see it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. I know when I was still in Bardstown, you know, the, the 
prosecutor's office, looked at cases, you know, looking for something common, a name that maybe kept appearing in some of Jason's arrests or cases, and you know, nothing jumped out to the investigators or the prosecutor's office or, or anything. And again, you may recall a few years ago, the Netherland family kind of took to Facebook and were like, please stop. We don't know Crystal. We did not know the police officer. We did not, you know, because you, you sometimes get that small town rumor stuff and that every time you go forward, you, you get the old two steps back. And, and um, so, the, you know, again, the Netherland family has even said, we, we don't know any of these people. We're, we're sh all sharing a tragedy very coincidental, yes, in the in the time frame, and uh, but we don't know them. And I, I think once you would talk to Jason or, or, or Sherry Ballard and her family, they probably didn't know the Netherlands. They did they know Jason? Maybe because he was, you know. But there's just not that one thing yet that I, I don't think can put them all together. You mentioned the aha moment. Do you think it's still possible after 10 years, there's still some stone left uncovered? There's still some piece of evidence that could make a break here? In my heart, I want to believe that, yes, it, whether it's 10 years or another year or five more years, something will come up. Um, I truly in my heart believe every stone has been uncovered, but what was uncovered has, you know, is that put on hold until we can bring in that other piece? Um, because, you know, KSP brought out every, every piece of equipment they had, crime scene stuff, and, you know, so, and again, don't know what all they have, but, uh, you know, to the, to the level that this investigation went, I, I, I still in my heart believe that someday, it's, it's, it's something's going to break, something's going to break. We hope so. And like I said, I hope I'm around to see it, it's a horrible thing to think, but it's like, you know, gosh, what, uh, you know, and again, that's selfish on my part. I, I, I want it for the, you know his boys, his family, you know uh, Amy and them. They they deserve it long before we do. Uh, I hope we're there to share with that. Put it that way.